here V of E is the error of the angle introduced by the noise. So here's our actual angle theta of T but since it's corrupted by noise we have this amount of the angle adding it to theta T and that's our psi of T of our resultant vector. So we could see that our angle of our resultant vector psi of t consists of two parts signal angle plus the noise angle. We can approximate the resultant vector since alpha ac is a lot larger than e of an nt then this vector r1 of t our resultant is essentially uh, going to be very close to alpha ac. So here's this approximation. We have e to the alpha ac added to by the amount here along the direction of alpha ac, which is given by e and of t cosine of phi n minus theta of t. And so that's our resultant vector. And it's going to rotate again as 2 pi f sub t, the frequency of the carrier, and the angle. So this is our amplitude and phase representation of our resultant vector. And our angle due to phi of t of t is just, which is our hypotenuse, hypotenuse of this component. Okay? Associated with this angle phi of t. So it's just opposite side, which is en sine of phi minus theta of t divided by the, this, but by the adjacent side. So it's the opposite over the adjacent. So here's our opposite. Here's our angle, our air angle, divided by our adjacent side, which consists of alpha AC and this component along AC, EN cosine of phi N minus theta of T. Now since alpha AC is a lot bigger than our noise, we can take the denominator here and approximate it as alpha AC. And this is our final result in which how message is corrupted by our theta E, which is our error due to the noise source. Okay, again, we have this psi consisting of two components, theta of T and phi of T. And here we evaluate phi of T in terms of this expression shown here.